this quick video, we're just going to look at how we can create a subsequence and use that as sort of a backup sequence. So we've already looked at how to create a subsequence. We've looked at how to edit sequences into other sequences, edit just a part of a sequence into another sequence. In this video, I just wanted to uh, specify that we could also use this technique to sort of make a backup of a sequence to maybe use it as a template or to try some other things uh, with that sequence. So we already have a sequence loaded. This is our Piano Wars The Grandeur versus AK Studio Grand. All right. You see there? Right? Okay. So, say we have this all structured out just how we like it. Now, in previous videos, I showed you how we could place a mark. So, I'm hitting I there and then O there. And then we could create that subsequence just by grabbing it. And it's just pulling out just this part that we marked, right? So let me open up uh, my backup sequences bin here. Grab it over here. Okay. So now if I just create a subsequence with our marks in place, I'll just throw it down here. And this is going to be appended with sub. In, in this case, 03. I've actually created a couple uh, previously. So I'll double click here. Loads that sequence up. And you can see it's very short. Very, very short. Okay. Now I can actually edit this. As we've seen before, I can edit this sequence because we have this loaded up in our timeline, this sequence, this subsequence. Okay, and I can edit this independently of the other sequence that we uh, previously had loaded up, which was this one here. And as you can see, everything's still intact in this sequence. Because as I mentioned in previous videos, each sequence is going to work independent of each other because it's literally pulling from our video files in here, our video files in here, our video files in here. It's actually pulling from these files that are on my hard drive, okay? Each sequence is pointing to whatever clips happen to, uh, happen to be in that sequence, right? So we can edit each sequence independently. So that gives us a really easy way to make a backup of our sequences so we don't mess something up if we just you know kind of want to try something. And of course, you can do this at any point in time uh, while you're editing your main sequence. It doesn't have to be at the end, but let's say you have this all laid out, right? And I want to make a backup because I want to try some things, but I don't want to maybe make a mistake. So a really easy way to make that backup is, again, make sure I have my backup sequences been open here, right there. What we'll do, now in this case, we, we don't need to place marks. You could place a mark. I could place an in there and then come to the very end and place an out by hitting O. So now everything in our timeline is selected then just grab this and throw it in the bin. But I actually don't need to place those marks. Okay, so let's go ahead and clear those marks there. So no marks, don't need them. Then I'll just grab our subsequence and create the subsequence. Okay, and here it is. I'm gonna change the name uh, just so we can tell. I'm just gonna call this Piano Wars Sub 04. That, that's fine, it's, it's easier to uh, differentiate. So now, guess what? Now say in this subsequence, which is loaded up, uh, actually it's not, let me double click it. Now it's loaded up in our timeline, okay? So now let's say I want to try some new things here. I don't want that there for some reason. Maybe I want this piano here. Uh, let me actually expand a bit so we can actually get my tools. Maybe I want this piano to expand out to here, and I want this one to come down there, and then I want this one not here at all, and I want to actually cut in for absolutely no reason, say, this here, part of this piano, and I'll place that on these tracks. I'll just overwrite that in right right here okay come down here and maybe we'll uh, cut this out for no reason and then expand this all right so we have severely changed this this sequence that we created a sub sequence of as you can see up here it still says sub sequence so there's actually no problem in doing this because we are pulling from our original files we're not changing anything in that original sequence and we can show that here, let me just get that out of the way, and we'll load up the sequence that we made our subsequence from, which is right here. Double click and watch this. Everything changes. Everything goes right back. Everything is still rendered out perfectly. There we go, and we're still good to go. So just keep that in mind if you want to uh, create a quick backup and maybe try some uh, extra things. Again, I had all of my tracks selected there, by the way. If, if I only had, say, these tracks selected, which are just audio tracks, Then I grab my subsequence, drop it in here, double click to load it up. Now we just have that audio. Okay, so very important to actually select those tracks that you want 
uh, included in your subsequence. And by the way, we can also create our subsequences by dragging them into our source monitor here and dropping instead of, you know, grabbing it and dropping it right into a bin. You can actually grab it and drop it into our source monitor. We'll just grab everything and maybe in this case, uh, just say I want an in here and out there. Just hitting I and O on the keyboard. That's all I'm doing. And then we'll just grab our sub sequence and we'll drop it into our source monitor release. And now we can select what bin we want that in. Okay, kind of superfluous for me since I like to usually have all of my bins open. But if you don't have all of your bins open, that can be a way where you can go ahead and uh, drop your sub sequence into your source monitor and go ahead and just create that sub sequence real easily into whatever bin you want. Just hit OK. And it's right here. You saw it created. OK. So you can do that as well just by dragging your sub sequence into your source monitor or right into your bin. Either one, up to you. All right, but that is a real quick and easy way to create a backup sequence of a sequence you're working on or that you could save as a template uh, for you know future use or whatever. And of course you can't, you know, I couldn't delete the media uh, in this sequence and then expect it to work in this sequence. Okay, because as I mentioned, we're pulling from the same exact media. We're just changing uh, where on the clip we're going to play from and play to. You know, how long is it going to play? At what position is it going to play? So if I move this, that does absolutely nothing to this sequence here. All it does is tells this file, our, our native instruments grandeur uh, piano, it just tells that file, which is in our videos bin here, it just says, hey, now instead of playing from this position, Whenever we, whenever the guy has this sequence loaded up, play it from this position. If you want to reuse the actual footage, don't delete it from any of the sequences. Uh, if you do delete it from the sequences, you can of course replace the media with other media. I just want to make sure you are aware that if you actually delete the media, okay, that the sequence is referencing either one. If you know, if you create a sub sequence, right, of this sequence, if I actually delete the media, not not if I delete, say, large chunks of this from the timeline, but if I actually delete the media you know, from my uh, actual hard drive, then it's going to be gone in both sequences. Okay, so just uh, keep all of that in mind over these four videos on sequences. You should know absolutely everything you can do, uh, at least pretty much everything you can do with uh, sequences now. So just keep that in mind if you want to make a real quick and easy backup. You know, I can do it to this sequence here as well. Just grab this, throw it in here. Now I have my sub sequence. Double click to actually load it up into our timeline here, which I have my sub. And then I can go ahead and try something new with this sequence. Maybe replace some footage or, you know, change the length of some of these. And I don't do any harm to my original sequence. And I can always reload that original sequence and go in there and sort of A, B, compare them. And of course, we could do what we did previously and load that sequence here. And we could say play that sequence from here, right? And uh, really compare really easily between sequences. Okay, so that is one way that you can create a really quick and easy backup of your sequences. And so you don't mess up your main sequence and also some other tips thrown in there. All right.